Hi, I'm Brian Trenchard-Smith and this is Trailers from Hell. History sometimes turns on a change in the weather. The Normandy landings could have been wrecked or delayed for weeks if the June storms had not abated for one crucial day. Delay was what Hitler needed to buy time to perfect a nuclear weapon. The Ardennes offensive was Hitler's last chance to stall the Allied advance. An atomic bomb propelled by a V-2 rocket into central London was but a few months away. He just needed a little more time. The V-3 rocket, still in development, could have reached New York. So, three German armies, 250,000 men, were launched at a line thinly defended by 75,000 Allied troops. The surprise attack was timed to coincide with a period of bad weather. This denied the Allies air cover. When the weather lifted, the German armies that had punched a bulge in the Allied lines became vulnerable once again to Allied air superiority. The Battle of the Bulge is a fairly cliché-ridden 60s war movie. Its saving grace is the breadth of its canvas. Here's the trailer. Due to the problems encountered on how the West was won, Cinerama's next production abandoned the three-panel format in favour of single-camera 70mm, projected onto the same curved screen. In thunderous stereo, the scenes of panzers overrunning the American front line were awesome, never previously depicted on this scale. British director Ken Anakin, who had directed sections of The Longest Day, knew his way around this kind of material. American M47 patterns were used to represent the formidable German Tiger tanks because the few surviving Tigers were in museums by 1965. The 52-hour clock for the mission in this scene prompts the trailer's narrator to use terms like massive Teutonic arrogance, yet the film itself tries to be fair to both sides in order to ensure its release in the increasingly important German market. Henry Fonda plays an intelligence officer whose warnings of the impending attack were dismissed by superiors preoccupied with planning a January offensive, but that's as close as the script gets to controversy. It avoids such interesting material as the seething rivalry between Generals Montgomery and Patton. That would make an interesting HBO miniseries. British involvement in the campaign is also not depicted, leaving the impression that the battle was an all-American affair. Henry Fonda does his best with a stock role, but it's Robert Shaw's Colonel Hessler who is the most compelling character. Shaw did extensive research to perfect Prussian-accented English, then found himself playing opposite German actors speaking English with German accents. The vowel soup that resulted did not play well, so Shaw ended up doing a lot of revoicing to bring his accent into line. Shaw said that he never saw Hessler as a bad man. He played him as a professional soldier, uninterested in political ideology, who excelled at the job he loved, someone who would have been regarded as a hero if he had ended up on the winning side. History is written by the victors, after all. There are cursory nods to anti-war sentiments, but the main business of the film is epic war spectacle. This was the biggest and bloodiest battle of World War II, though the film is virtually bloodless to ensure that vital British U certificate that would deliver maximum box office. Among the minor roles, two B-movie actors did surprisingly well. In his scenes with James MacArthur, who went on to TV fame in Hawaii Five-0, George Montgomery scores as the hard-bitten, seen-it-all veteran. Warner contract player and TV cowboy Ty Hardin delivered the most effective performance of his career as one of the actual English-speaking commandos dropped behind Allied lines to change road signs, seize bridges and cause chaos. When Ty came to Australia for the Riptide series, he told me how bitterly he regretted turning down Sergio Leone's offer to star in A Fistful of Dollars. Ah, what might have been. For various reasons, the Riptide crew nicknamed Ty, Try Harder. Interesting sidebar, after Ty Harden left show business, he became an ultra-right-wing evangelical preacher and tax protester who started an anti-Semitic, anti-government militia movement, the Arizona Patriots, till the FBI raided the compound, uncovering a horde of weapons and ammunition. Also effective in a small part was Telly Savalas, who went on to be TV's Kojak for many years. Remember this embarrassing moment? Why was it in the picture, or even in the trailer? perhaps to suggest that female characters play a bigger role in the film than they actually do.
That's the nature of trailers sometimes, selective information and distorted emphasis. You pick the selling moments, like the Bastogne commander's famous response to a surrender demand. Nuts. And the Malmody massacre, which gives Charles Bronson his best scene in the movie. Because of his multi-ethnic look and solid supporting performances in high-profile movies, Bronson would soon rise to stardom as the classic Don't mess with this guy in a string of violent action pictures that were huge in foreign territories, Once Upon a Time in the West being my favourite. The trailer largely avoids battle shots without snow, of which there are many. Photography started on April the 1st and snow ran out rapidly, even in the Sierra de Guadarrama mountains. Much of the film was shot on barren plains around Madrid, totally unlike the snowbound forested hills where the actual battle was fought in appalling weather conditions. The most authentic movies about the Ardennes campaign were made ten years earlier, William Wellman's Battleground and Robert Aldrich's Attack. Battle of the Bulge comes to the giant medium that has been waiting for a spectacle comparable to its dimensions. Battle of the Bulge. 